My mother had me with a donor. He was someone she knew who was willing to let her have a child to raise herself. When I was 12, mom met her husband. Her husband had a 17-year-old daughter at the time. Her husband and his daughter were idiots, and mom threw me in the deep end. She thought I'd see this dude as my dad because I'd never had one before. Even at 12, I realized that a guy who commented on how I didn't smile as a girl should and who commented on my weird interest for a girl was never going to be worthy of being called my parent, let alone my dad. His daughter taunted me for having no dad and for not being cute enough. When my donor didn't fall in love with me and decided not to be my dad, I asked if she understood what a donor was. She told me someone who makes freaks. When I was 16, the daughter moved back in with her boyfriend and their kids. I was then forced to babysit after school and sometimes on the weekends because they either couldn't be bothered or nobody wanted to pay. I did the bare minimum of babysitting and I didn't grow attached to those children in the two-ish years I babysat them. I wanted nothing to do with babysitting them, but I figured I could at least game when home with them rather than being grounded. I moved out and cut my mom off because she chose a husband who was an idiot to me and kept me around him and his daughter, who was also an idiot to me. I have nothing to do with any of them. A few months ago, my bio dad died and I learned he left all of his assets to me. It was a lot of money in a house that I sold, which got me a lot of money. My mom learned about this via mutual friends. She reached out and told me how much they've struggled financially since their house burned down two years ago. I had heard about that at the time and how her step grandkids are looking at a really bad Christmas and how great it would be if I, as their aunt, her daughter and part of the family bought gifts for the kids. I told her she and her step grandkids are not my family and were not owed any money from me and that I'd like it if she did not make me change to another number. She called me on a business number I have. She asked me how I could be so cold and even if I resent her, how could I say that about my niece and nephew that I spent every day with for two years and who looked up to and adored me? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Give them money. Mom, I've been on my own support network for years and years. What happens to me when I have needs? None of you ever take care of me, so there's no point in me thinking I'll be able to rely on you for support. Better to keep my money for me because I've never been able to count on you guys. My nest eggs stay in my nest. It should have been colder. Oh, you want money? Then when you pay me in full for those two years of forced babysitting, I'll consider giving half of it back to you. You are more than right to stay in no contact with them. Try blocking her number on your business phone as it sucks to change those. Move on and enjoy your inheritance yourself. You were clear that your step family hurts you psychologically and that your biological mother never protected or supported you so I can see why you'd feel absolutely zero connection and even less responsibility for them. On another note, I hope your bio dad left a note to help you understand why he didn't so much as ever reach out to you. Honestly, it feels more like mom is mad that all his money went to you instead of her and is now trying to weasel in on it. Now, I wonder if the donor had wanted to be in your life at least a little and mom refused. We'll never know, but it's quite odd for someone who genuinely felt no attachment to you to leave such a substantial inheritance. I'm sorry your childhood ended up as it did. Enjoy your inheritance. My sister married my best friend Jamie, and they had a daughter together, Rosie. Rosie was five when Jamie died. He was diagnosed with a heart condition months before, and was in a bad way by the time the diagnosis came, so he knew his death was coming, but he had hoped he could get a transplant in time. Jamie had no family. He was a foster kid as long as I knew him, but we became brothers through our friendship. I was closer to him than my biological brothers. When he knew no heart was coming to save him, he asked me to look out for Rosie and to be there for her in his place. He knew I adored Rosie, and he knew I would talk to Rosie about him and help her keep his memory alive. So I did. We're still close to this day. She adores my husband and me as much as we adore her, so she asked me to act as the father of the bride at her wedding. She said it would be the closest thing to having her dad there. She plans to pin a photo of him to the flower she carries down the aisle. Where the problem comes in is her stepdad. He's been in her life since she was six. 
My sister met him 10 months after Jamie died, started dating him after 6 months of knowing him, and introduced them immediately. He and my sister are not very happy that she asked me, her uncle, over her other dad, and they're unhappy with me. They say I prevented Rosie from having another dad, and that my presence with Rosie and allowing her to talk so much about her dad left no room for Jamie to fill the father role. He has been in her life for 18 years now, and it's still not enough for him to be the father of the bride. Rosie apologized to me for getting into trouble over this. She told me she couldn't think of a living person she would rather have over me, and that this is what she wants because her stepdad is not her dad. I told her as long as she's happy with her decision, it changes nothing for me, but her stepdad will not let up. He told me I should be encouraging her to ask him and that I'm disrespecting him and all he did for her, that he was there longer than Jamie, and the fact that he still takes priority over him to her even in this and that I'm going along with it makes him angry. He called me an idiot and said I denied Rosie another father. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Her wedding, her choice. She already has a father, her stepfather isn't her father, you have been there her whole life, and obviously you have played a very important role in her life. So walk her down the aisle with pride and know her father, your best friend, is looking down and smiling. Take pride in the fact that you have and are living up to the promise that you made to him. If Rosie is old enough to get married, she's old enough to make her own decisions. Please don't let their self-pity stop you from doing this. It's really awful your sister and brother-in-law still want to erase your niece's dad's memory. It's her choice she's an adult, and she doesn't consider her stepdad as her second dad. She said she considers you walking her down the aisle represents her dad being there, and it's obvious why. You kept his memory alive, so please don't let her down. Let her dad be present at her wedding. A lot of these stories that talk about step-parents lamenting their relationship with their step-children seem to be so centered on how the step-parent views what the relationship should be. To me, it seems like the very first hurdle they need to overcome is that a birth parent should place the kid's needs above their own. When I 30F married my hubby 45, my steps in and, at the time, his fiance both were early 20s started passing out their baby shower invites while my hubby and I were cutting our cake. I do want to point out that my hubby and I did not receive an invite. I also want to point out that my hubby is my stepson's father. In hindsight, I should have said something right then and there, but I was feeling selfish at the moment because I didn't want to draw attention to her on what was supposed to be a special day. A few days later, they came to our house to discuss having their wedding reception in our garage, and it was then that I brought up how I felt. I explained how their actions were disrespectful and tasteless and that they not only made me feel uncomfortable but also my guests. The issue was not everyone that attended the reception was invited to her baby shower. I further explained that we the bride and groom weren't even invited and that they should have just mailed their invites or asked us if it was okay to hand them out. My daughter-in-law told me it wasn't a real wedding since this was just the reception and some of the guests in attendance were invited to her baby shower. She would save on postage since they were planning their own wedding. It's not that big of a deal because her family always does this type of thing. Her mom told her it wouldn't be rude. If I was really that upset, I should have said something that day. What do you mean you didn't get an invite? We handed it to you just as you were cutting the cake. Here, take this one, then proceeds to hand me an invite. Now, I would remember if I got an invite while cutting my darn cake. I just took the card and went inside. I let my hubby talk to them the rest of the time. We did not attend the baby shower because of this incident. A rift was created in the family. I just want to know if I'm an idiot. Clarification, the baby shower was in August, I believe, so they could have passed out their invites during their own wedding reception instead of during mine. I was married in June. They were married in July, the beginning part, and the baby shower was in August. Not the idiot. Tacky to announce pregnancy at a wedding and just as tacky to hand out invites to another event, even more so when not everyone was invited. Didn't we all learn not to hand out invitations in public in grade school if everyone wasn't invited? They would have mentioned it if they didn't know it was wrong. Not saying anything on the day was fair, they didn't deserve any special attention, and I guess daughter-in-law would then sadly and loudly play the victim for how you were jealous and spiteful and mean. 
Not only was what they did rude and classless, she then doubled down on it, saying that it wasn't a real wedding and that her mom approved. She claims that she did it to save postage. Do you know what doesn't use postage or upset wedding guests and participants? Evites. Meh. Yeah. It really would not have mattered what the occasion was. You don't use someone else's party to highlight your own, and you do not invite people to an event in front of others who are not included. There's no shame in being on opposite sides of a family this classless, however. Your husband should probably tell his son that unless he adheres to some basic etiquette, they can expect a future with a lot of hurt feelings. Yesterday was my birthday, and my best friends planned a party for me. All I knew was we were meeting at our local dive bar, and I ended up being about one and a half hours late. I was finally on my way and got this text. We love you, but we really don't like you right now, and it's going to be a long time before we want to see you. We put a lot of effort into this, and you showed us you don't give a single darn about our time, effort, and our shared story. Rob has the cake at least baked for you behind the bar if you care enough to stop and get it, but we're leaving, and we're very upset with you. Please give us some space for a while. I tried to call the girl that sent the text, and I assumed she blocked me. I called another friend, and while she talked, she was very rude and said all of our friend group is really tired of me being late all the time, and being late to my own birthday party is a level of rudeness and arrogance that they aren't willing to put up with anymore. I said this sounded like they were breaking up with me, and she said that would be a good analogy and to please give her some space. To say I'm brokenhearted is an understatement. We've been best friends since freshman year in college, and being late is kind of who I am. I didn't know it bothered them so much. Am I the idiot for being late to my birthday party? Yesterday was my wedding day. I showed up at the church two hours late and it was all locked up and no one was there. Now my friends and family are blowing up my phone with angry texts and my fiance says he doesn't want to see me anymore. They should have expected this because I'm always late. It's just the way I am. I didn't know it bothered them so much. You are the idiot. Being late is 10 to 15 minutes because you were stuck in traffic. One and a half hours is blowing them off. They have every right to be mad at you and to not want to associate with you anymore. One and a half hours without an explanation is either an emergency came up or I don't give a crap about being there was there no emergency. Your only explanation for your being late is LOL. That's part of my identity. There was an event specifically planned for you to celebrate you, to love on you, and you have absolutely no concern for your friend's time and effort. Being late is not a personality trait, but being rude and showing no concern for other people's time is. I read that part and cringed so hard, like why do people think being late is a personality? At your grown age, you should have been able to manage your time better. After years of being late, Op sounds very self-centered in her own little world. So, have you given any thoughts to, like, recognizing what they're saying, apologizing, changing your ways, because you're coming here to say, ah, but was it that bad suggested you're not hearing what they're saying? You want someone to say it wasn't a big deal, meaning that you're still not getting that it was a big deal to them. They're hurt, they're frustrated, and you want to deny that. You only mention how upset you are and not a bit of remorse for upsetting them hard lesson to learn on your birthday, but seriously, op, do some reflection and make some amends. Background, I was an affair baby, though it's complicated. My mom was not married. She was actually divorced from my sister's bio dad, but they were back together and had my sister. Mom treated him like crap. He left her, and then I was born a few months later. When I was six months old, my mom got arrested. The man I've known as my dad my whole life, my sister's bio dad, did not want us to grow up apart, so he took me in. My bio is an idiot. He had a son after me and was trying to use him to get to me. Dad tried to help us have contact, but bio was not a good parent, so dad reported him to CPS. Dad ended up adopting him too, so the three of us were raised together. My sister is the only bio of dad's, but we didn't care because he treated us all three the same. I'm used to comments about me not being dad's real daughter or how he only adopted my brother because he wanted a son as he had to raise two girls. Where we grew up, people were nosy, gossiped a lot, and were unafraid of being mean, but I've always loved that the people closest to me never saw us as less of a true family and never said those hurtful things. 
I'm married and my husband is one of those people who was never awful about it, but his family was confused the first time they met us. We were clearly not a bio family. They expected me to have my husband's dad walk me down the aisle at my wedding and said how sad it is that I never knew my dad and made many other comments about not having a real parent. My husband and I took a break from them because they wouldn't listen to him and stop saying those things. They apologized and we had started being around them again when they said our future children would at least have two grandparents. My husband said our kids would have three. They brushed him off so we were done again, but I was so mad that I leaned in on what they were saying. I pointed out how terrible it is to have a dad who loves his kid regardless of blood and instead two criminal parents would have been better parents who would have not been good to their kids. I went into details about just how bad things would have been with bio and how messed up my mom is. I wanted them to feel bad forever implying the man who saved my brother and me and raised us was less of our parent and it worked. They were mad though and said on top of depressing everyone. I was an idiot for trying to make them feel like crap. My husband thought it was amazing because it really stopped them in their tracks, but now it may have gone too far, especially with his apparent family's anger. Am I the idiot? Your real dad, the man who loved and raised you, sounds amazing. He more than makes up for you and your husband's crappy birth parents. Not the idiot for explaining the reality of the situation to your in-laws. Sorry if they don't like having feelings, I guess. It's sad, frustrating, and disrespectful how they kept ignoring and invalidating your and your brother's relationship with your father. It's condescending, too, that they expected your father-in-law to walk you down the aisle when you have a wonderful father perfectly willing and able to do so. People who cannot process that being a real family isn't about whether you're related by blood or not are incredibly sad people. By the way, your hubby is a keeper. They sound like they're trying to isolate you from your family, especially with that two grandparents comment. Particularly telling that they don't admit that they were jerks, they just accuse you of making them feel like jerks. It will always be your fault, not theirs, in their eyes. You can also see how the cycle of bad parenting breaks, right? Having had such an amazing dad, Op has grown to be a confident woman unafraid of speaking up for the people she cares about. She also has found a person who's unafraid to stick up for her. If Freud is right and we marry or want to marry someone like our dad, Op's dad paved the way for her to find a wholesome man. Thank you. Ooh.